Jill Lunsford, and this is my reflection video, part of my culminating portfolio project for my Master's of Educational Technology with a Certificate in Technology Integration of Boise State University. My career as a professional educator started 20 years ago in 1993 after I graduated with my bachelor's degree from Weber State University with a major in history and a minor in computer science. Since then, I have taught history, computer programming, internet with HTML, and spent several years as my school's network administrator and resident techie. I had always felt that I had been fairly proficient in integrating technology into my classroom and had been able to help others do the same. Extending my education with a master's degree in educational technology seemed like the next logical step in my career. Over time, I have taken master level courses at local universities, but it felt that the majority of them were lacking in rigor and relevance. I wanted my master's to be a meaningful experience where I could learn new skills, which would help me further my professional goals as well as become a better teacher. Boise State's program came highly recommended, with the added benefit that all courses were taught online. My time here at Boise State has truly been the educational experience that I hope it would be and more. It has stretched my mind and strengthened my confidence in my abilities to integrate technology into my classes and to be an example to, and mentor to my peers. Unfortunately, what I realized as I started this program was that what I had to an extent considered technology integration was really no more than using technology as a means to an end. Requiring students to turn in type papers, create PowerPoints, search internet for resource material, delivering lectures via PowerPoint, did nothing to help them utilize the power of technology-based tools we have available to us. As a result, my goal through this program was to do more than just jump through the hoops. I wanted to make sure that every project I created was something that I not only could use, but will and have used in my classes. We'd like to talk about three major assignments or aspects of my program that have had an immense effect on not only my educational philosophy, but my classroom this past year. One of the projects that I was able to incorporate this past year was my PBL project I created for EdTech 542, entitled Greece versus Rome. In the project, students were asked to answer the question, which civilization is better, Greece or Rome? Student groups looked at several aspects of society, politics, arts, and science to determine category winners and then determine an overall number one. Then they needed to support their choice with evidence. With project-based learning, the teacher slash project designer creates a structure that allows students to explore the subject matter in their own way, taking their investigation in the direction they choose. At first, the students and I were both a little skeptical as to how this was all going to work, but I explained to them that this was a science experiment for all of us, and experiments need to be followed through the end. I've always liked the fact that I am in control of my classroom and in control of the learning experience. Opening the door to the unknown for my students to control their own path of exploration was unnerving and took me well out of my comfort zone. Students were also unsure as this was out of the norm of traditional coursework. As the project progressed, the students really jumped in as they realized I was not directing them to a specific finding, but truly allowing them to come to their own conclusions. I was able to change my role from that of the giver of information to a facilitator. I was able to circulate among groups, ask clarifying questions, offer suggestions, and answer questions students had about their research and findings while helping others stay on task. Overall, my students thoroughly enjoyed the project and presented quality projects. On my end-of-year survey, I had many students note that this was one of the units they enjoyed most, citing their overall control as the reason. For me, the project has given me the confidence and desire to create more learning activities that allow students to have more control over the learning process. My PBL project in creation and execution also drove home the importance of instructional design which was covered in EdTech 503 as well as EdTech 542. Taking the time during project creation to design a quality project and needed structures to help students progress through the activity is essential for success and meaningful learning to occur. I will admit that while I have always seen the importance of the Internet as a learning tool in the past, I've been skeptical to incorporate too many Internet-based research projects as most of them have resulted in copy-cut-and-paste plagiarism. During my coursework through my master's program, I have realized that there have been two main causes for this. One, 
being my failure for not more clearly teaching and stressing the importance of authentic research and what constitutes plagiarism, as I have primarily relied upon the fact that the language arts program covers those skills. The second reason was poor project design on my part. Both of these reasons are well within my control to change, and I have started to do so. The plagiarism video that I created in a Tech 501 will become a regular addition to my course before research projects are assigned. This is also a video I've shared with others in my department that has helped them start to better address the issue as well. My EdTech 503 instructional design project, Big Six, I created a research project for my students that steps them through the six steps that help them better assess, research, and record project information in a credible way. This project was designed as a historical biography report for my students, but could be modified to fit a variety of research topics. In this project, students were asked to create a list of questions that they would like to answer during their report on their assigned figure, create a list of places in which to search for information, and determine criteria which would help them determine whether the site was credible. Then, using provided note cards, they would organize and summarize their research findings and citation information that would be needed in the final product. Once the information is collected, then students start the process of writing and revising the historical sketch. Students received a copy of the steps, note cards, project timeline, final project checklist, and a template to create their virtual museum exhibit for their person and the rubric by which it would be graded. Although initially resistant to the idea that I was not just going to take them to the library to start a project by doing a Google search and that I was going to require handwritten notes, the majority of my students toward the end of the project could see the benefit of attacking the problem in a step-by-step -step fashion. They were willing to admit that the process had helped them create final products they were proud of. As a whole, I was more confident that students' projects turned in were a synthesis of their research and not just an example of copy, cut, and paste. After having used this project in class, I can now see that research-based activities can be effectively incorporated into my curriculum if they are designed properly. As I create and implement more research projects, they will help me to address many of the standards in the state-adopted Common Core. I am excited to see where my newfound confidence and change in philosophy will take me and my students in the coming years. The last area I would like to discuss is that of true technology integration. With the skills I have learned in EdTech 501, 513, 533, and 541, I have a greater understanding of ways in which I can truly incorporate technology into my teaching that goes much farther than I ever have before. Using research proven theories of learning, I've been able to create lessons and units of instructions that allow my students to better understand not only content and essential concepts, but also be able to demonstrate that in meaningful, creative ways. My final project website for EdTech 541 is a starting point to integrate cross-curricular content into my history courses, but will also serve as a starting point to share ideas with my peers as I continue to work towards my long-term goals of becoming a district technology integration specialist. Projects I created in EdTech 513 Multimedia and 533 YouTube for Educators have helped me foster skills and understanding that I can create a variety of methods to deliver information to my students, even when I'm not there, and more importantly, create multimedia projects that fill gaps in collected resources that can help my students be more successful. The course has also given me a better understanding of Web 2.0 tools, which will allow students to collaborate and help each other also be successful in their coursework. In conclusion, my coursework to complete my master's degree has been everything I hoped it would be and more. It has provided me with new perspectives, confidence, and increased my professional tool set that will carry me into the final years of my career and further as I continue to pursue my other professional goals. In many ways, with my new outlook on teaching and technology integration, I feel as if I'm at the beginning of my teaching career as I look at new ways to deliver information and teach my students. Like I stated in the conclusion of my rationale paper, I feel I'm at the beginning mastery stages of technology integration. There will always be new techniques and tools that will evolve that will change how, what, and why we do what we do. Complete mastery is something that will always be the goal, but is also a never-ending process of learning, implementation, and revision. 
Technology has come a very long way since I was in school myself, and I can't wait to see what develops next and discover ways in which I can use it to its fullest potential, not only for me, but for my students. I would like to thank you for your consideration of my master's portfolio and thank those professors and classmates with whom I have traveled down this long and winding road that I have been able to collaborate with and learn from in the past two years. Thank you. Thank you.